On today's episode, we're gonna talk about Swiss design. What is it? Why is it so important? What's the hype and how you can use it in your next web design? Let's rock and roll. Hey, designer friends, what is up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome to a new segment here on the channel, which I'm calling Inspiration Weekly. I wanna share things that inspire me as a designer share them with you, get you interested in them, and hopefully that will open your mind. And also I'm gonna try and make this as practical as possible so that you'll be able to use these ideas in your next design project. And so today I wanna talk about Swiss design, also known as the international typographic style. You might've heard about it. If not, welcome. This is completely going to open your mind, hopefully. So what is this? So I'm gonna show you some images. These are some kind of typical examples from Swiss design. And as you can see, it's very, very kind of like clean, minimalistic, all we have here is typography, sans serif, bold typography, usually Helvetica. By the way, Helvetica, which is, has been popularized by this style, the meaning of the word Helvetica is actually Swiss, right? And it was developed in Switzerland. And so what we have here is very, very clean layout typography, just a bunch of shapes. Here are some more examples, a lot of sometimes powerful images, powerful layouts that kind of really gets you inside and and impact you uh, with these big shapes or big imagery or big type. Now, why is this important? Like what's, what's groundbreaking here? So we have to understand the context in which this style became popular and that is the 1950s. Now, before that, what we have in, in graphic design and advertising is something like this, use of a lot of different illustrations, a lot of different fonts, things are kind of like messy and disorganized. This is basically kind of like the state of graphic design before the 50s. And then there was World War II, which also kind of like influenced the world because everything was in so much chaos. And so after that, out of all of this mess of World War II, based in Switzerland, which was kind of like neutral and I I think didn't suffer too much, I guess, during World War II, uh, there were very two very influential designers who kind of started this style of, they were trying to rationalize things. They were trying to say, I think they felt like, um, you know, personal opinions and stuff like that. Maybe we want to leave them outside and we want to be as rational as possible. And we're trying to think about, you might've heard about Bauhaus. This was all part of this kind of like thinking that form follows function and we want to be as rational as possible. And the design actually needs to be invisible. We don't want to see it. So after this kind of like thinking, see how it impacted the design. And and in this case, I'm just looking at advertising. Obviously web design wasn't a thing (laughs) back in the fifties, but you can really see how it, everything becomes way, way cleaner. You know, uh, the text, which used to be either centered or kind of like aligned to a block is now flush to the left. We have sans serif font, big imagery, and you can see the clean layout and use of a very, very clear grid. So, this, the two main kind of like actors who made this thing happen or popularized these styles, and I think you should be familiar with them and their work, are two people. The first one is Armin Hoffman. Both of them were actually designers and also educators. They were teaching in Swiss design school in Switzerland. And also they wrote books, right? Before before YouTube, if you wanted to influence people, you had to write books. So Armin Hoffman wrote a very influential book called Graphic Design Manual. And the second person who is super, super influential um, and I think most recognized with this Swiss design uh, style is called Joseph Muller Brockman. And he wrote a phenomenal book, I think, to today called Grid Systems in Graphic Design. In this book, I really, really recommend getting it and actually getting like a physical copy because I don't think that you can read it on Kindle or something like this. I I first saw this book in my, I went to design school, went to the design school library and just picked up this book actually randomly. But when I opened it and start scheming it and start reading it, it was actually mind blowing. This book is all about how to use grid and how to think about layout from a very, very, again, rational and functional perspective. So what is the content that you have? How many uh, columns do you need to use that? What kind of images do you have? How many headlines do you have? And helps you think about how many columns you should have, how big they should be, what's the gap between them, and just explore a lot of different layouts. This book I think is really, 
at least for me personally, it was like fundamental in understanding how design works. But I think obviously from the 50s being relevant 50 years, 70 years into the future, that's that's like incredible and was super, super uh, impactful. So why is this important? Why are we talking about this style, which was very popular back in the 50s? Because this style, this minimalism, focusing on typography, clean typography and, leak, it, and, and grids is something that we're still seeing today and is influencing every type of design that we have today. Even if you're thinking about something like, you know, the New York subway, which uses Helvetica and is very, very following the exact principles of Swiss design. It's a very, very uh, great example of this type of design, but you can see it in packaging. You can see it all around us, you know, um, and even on websites, even when you look at websites today, all the award-winning websites, a lot of time you will see they are very, very clean using big type or type that has very contrasted sizes and very, very clear grids. And you see that and you can immediately recognize that the influences of this design are based in the principles of Swiss design. And so, I wanna show you a, a few more examples of how people were trying to use these ideas in modern times and today and, and start understanding these principles. Okay, we have, how can we use type? Very, very minimalistically, right? Shapes, types, and, and clean grids and create amazing designs with it. So I wanna show you two things that I think might help you to, to put this into practice. The first one is an amazing project called Swiss. I, I forgot the name of the person who did this, but basically this person took these inspiration, mainly again, the posters uh, designs of Joseph Mueller Brookman. And he basically took all of his favorite bands and he created, uh, you know, posters for, <laughs> for their shows. So you can see here, and this is, I'm, I'm going to put the link below this video. He has here um, tons and tons and tons of uh, um, of posters here using those exact principles. And you can see that the creativity is just unlimited. What you can do with a very simple color palette, very one font and, and good grid, and the, the creativity here is unlimited. Another thing that I think can help you see how people are using these principles today is this Pinterest board, which is basically uh, modern interpretations of Swiss design. And you can really see how people um, are using this. Some of the examples here are, you know, uh, original examples, but some of them are actual, you know, new new designs of magazines or a layout that are still very, very influenced by this, uh, this design styles and these principles. And I think, First of all, I think you should explore this and this is a very great uh, resource for inspiration for projects that you're working on. But if you wanna practice, especially if you wanna practice your typography and your, uh, and your grid skills, these principles, trying to apply these principles, kind of like in the Swiss project, saying, all right, I only have one font, I only have one color, how can we make, how can we create an interesting layout using grid and all of these typographic elements and just practice that using not, not going crazy. You don't have to use images. You don't have to have illustrations. If you're trying to do the most creative thing that you can with just minimal, you know, set of tools that I think will make you a better designer. So I hope, I got you interested in Swiss design. I really encourage you to dive deeper into that. Get the the Joseph Mueller Brookman book if you can. I think it will really impact your your layout abilities. And I will see you in the next video. Of course, of course, of course, if you're not subscribed to the Flux channel yet, make sure you uh, subscribe. Make sure you like this video so YouTube knows to show you more videos like this. I'm gonna make this a usual spot on the channel. So I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.